welcome to my channel. Today I am in Washington, I'm up around the Puget Sound, and I'm going to do something I'm not very good at and I don't do very often. Actually, I've only done it a handful of times, and I haven't come away with, with <laughs> very much, to be honest. I'm going to be photographing, hopefully, some bald eagles as they feed at the low tide around these inlets in Puget Sound. So this is the time of year in the spring where the, the, these fish come in and they spawn and they have these small fish and the eagles fight one another supposedly. I have never done this before and I don't have the right equipment because I mostly do landscape photography. So I had to, um, I had to get some extra gear. My longest lens that I own is a 100 to 400 and that's not going to cut it when you're dealing with, with bird photography. So, <laughs> I went out and I rented this. This is a Sony 200 to 600 G Master lens. And it's, it's huge. It's absolutely monstrously sized. And I, hopefully, this is going to be long enough to do the job. In addition to that lens, which I don't want to have to hold for hours on end while I'm trying to track and follow these birds, I rented a Wimberley gimbal. Now, I don't know what a gimbal is. It's a fancy tripod head, and it's huge too. This is a gimbal. This giant piece that's up on top of the tripod. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is I have to mount and balance the camera on this gimbal so that it doesn't just flop around. Um, the ideal setting on it is no matter where you put the camera, no matter where this goes, no matter, because this is going to swing this way and this allows you to turn. So as you turn, you can pan with the birds and whatever you might need to do to follow it without having to hold this gigantic lens. So that's our first step is me figuring out how to get this thing balanced on this gimbal head. So if you ever rent one of these, this is the process you'll go through once you get your lens mounted to your camera and to get it set up and balanced on your tripod. So you wanna make sure that your tripod head is level. And with this fast bowl on my gazelle, this is super easy to do. I've already got it leveled. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this plate and you're gonna release it and put it all the way on the bottom, all the way down. And you can go ahead and keep this from rotating like that. And the next thing is we're going to uh, lock this in place as well for now. Because I don't want the camera to fall off while I get it mounted onto the plate. So you can see I've got this. this it comes with this huge Arca Swiss plate specifically designed for this. And I've got it situated nice and tight uh, in the middle of this. So we're going to set this on. Ugh. Man, this is a beast. This is so incredibly heavy. So I'm going to totally guess on about where this needs to fall. So the next thing is, once I am sure that this monstrous lens and my camera is all securely, securely connected to here, I'm going to release this and notice how my camera tilts forward. So that means there's too much weight this way and I need to move it backwards on the plate. So what I'll do is just loosen this, move it back just a little bit, tighten it up, making sure it's tight. Let go. It still tilts forward a little bit, so I'm going to loosen it up, move it back just a little bit like that, and maybe just a little bit more, just the smallest amount. That's pretty well, it's pretty well balanced there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to adjust this plate here up and down because the idea is if I go all the way to here and let go, the camera should stay, and it doesn't. It, it comes back to center, which is what this first adjustment was. So our next step is to adjust this plate vertically to allow us to position the camera and it stays there. All right, there is a release over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. And we're gonna loosen it up and we're gonna bring the camera up onto this. And again, I'm just gonna guess because I have no idea and I'm gonna tighten it down. Again, making sure that it's tight. And once it's tight, I'm gonna just give it a lift up and notice that it's, it's, it's still not holding the position. Right, so I'm going to adjust it some more until I can find a, where it starts to work. I think I went too high, probably. Let's see. So I think I need to go down just a little bit more. Okay, see how it just wants to fall back this way. So let's keep on going. Nope. So this is harder than it looks.
All right, so I made another adjustment instead of you watching me fiddle with it forever as I went through it. But now if you notice, and now we're good to go. So real quick, settings, continuous autofocus, number one. And since I am an absolute newbie, or close to clueless when it comes to bird photography, I'm gonna be shooting at F8. Now normally you would, the experienced photographers are probably gonna be shooting at, at the widest aperture they can so they can keep that ISO low because your shutter speed is going to be two thousandth of a second and I'm again uh, I am not good at panning and so I imagine I might have to go faster than two thousandth of a second I don't know I'm going to have to experiment but I have it in manual mode the important setting to remember is auto ISO because your ISO can then ramp up and down whatever it needs to be based on when you're tracking and you go into the sky, it's brighter, they go into the water or on the shoreline and it's darker, you're, all of your exposures are gonna be pretty much spot on. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in auto ISO, that you're in continuous autofocus, that you are in burst mode so that when you hold that shutter down, you're just taking shot after shot, as many frames per second as you can get. You're gonna <clears throat> set your aperture. If you're really good, you don't need this video. Um, but if you're not like me, I'm going to be shooting at f/8, so I can get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more depth of field than I would at 5.6, you know, or somewhere around in there. So those are the settings that I'm going to start out with, and I'm going to practice a bit, and then hopefully go find some eagles. I'm back in the van, and I've looked at my photos from this morning, and oh God. <laughs> it was not good and i'm glad i'm not shooting film so here's some outtakes from this morning's learning curve So I hope you enjoyed that that collage of, of travesty of, of awful <laughs> photography. But you shoot enough and you, the, I, I got better as the morning went on. Learned a couple things after this morning. Number one, 600 millimeters is barely long enough. And I mean barely. Uh, 800 would be better. I pretty much stayed racked out at 600 millimeters. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in the morning. I'm hoping that the, uh, as the tide starts to go out, the birds will start closer to where the road is. And then as that tide goes out, they'll just follow it away from the shore. That's what I'm thinking. I'm here, obviously today, tomorrow, and then I, I head home that following morning. So I've got two more chances to try to come away with some epic shots of eagles fighting over the fish. And that's what I'm going for. Not just birds in flight, but the eagles and the herons all fighting over the food and going at it. That's, what I'm, uh, that's why I'm here. So hopefully tomorrow morning, is, that's going to be part of what I shoot. Good morning. I'm out here early. I, got, I was the first one here, and then shortly after I arrived... 700 of my favorite uh, new photographer friends all showed up. I'm actually going to be meeting a friend of mine, Steve, who lives in Seattle, and we're going to be out here all day shooting, at least until the tide comes back in. You can see the tides going out. <clears throat> and there's already an eagle out there waiting for some fish. And we're, the goal is, again, to see these eagles as they swoop in and they're fighting one, one another for the fish. Um, and we're just waiting for all that to start happening. So we'll see. Well, good morning. This is the last day of shooting eagles. 
and <clears throat> I got here super early because it's the weekend and this this whole area I think is going to be overrun very very soon with cars and people and I wanted to make sure I could uh, have a place to park so I'm cooking breakfast and just enjoying the view out the window of of the of the sound and the sunrise which is okay I didn't bother doing any uh any photographs because it wasn't that great but it's still nice and uh, I'm gonna have breakfast enjoy a cup of coffee and just wait for low tide and then uh, Steve uh, be here and he's bringing a few of his other photography friends and we're gonna hang out and um, hopefully get some really nice shots of the Eagles fighting over some fish this morning so stay tuned fingers crossed and let's see what happens That was day three. The action was a little better maybe today than it was the uh, the previous two days. Still came away with some really nice photographs, I think. Um, I'm definitely going to be coming back here next year just to, uh, to, to, to get a feel for how everything flows. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to that were here say that other photographers who live in the area that come and know this place like the back of their hand say that this was very unusual and that the the number of interactions and the eagles and the herons and all the birds and the activity i should say is very much reduced than what they've seen in the past so that makes me feel good that i've got some good shots regardless of the fact that that everybody else was kind of like sad that it wasn't as good as years past i felt that i got some really nice very cool photographs um so I'm excited to come back and I will definitely be doing that next year. And if anyone is interested in maybe coming on a workshop here to the Puget Sound area in outside of Seattle to do some eagle photography, let me know in the comments below. Let me know via an email. And uh, if I get enough interest, I can set something up and we can. Uh, it's gorgeous here. It's absolutely stunning and the, the weather's perfect and uh, we can come out and shoot eagles i mean right now there is like no less than 12 eagles sitting right outside this window um but unfortunately they're just <laughs> they're just sitting a lot of sitting and they're not a lot of flying eating or flapping <laughs> but anyway um i'm going to show you the photos that i got the rest of the photos uh that are that are good and um again let me know your comments below and i appreciate you please subscribe click that notification bell so you don't miss any videos that I release. I appreciate you watching very, very much, and we'll see you next time.